Hi, I'm Doug North, and this is how to make a bow drill friction fryer. So the components of a bow drill, you need your bearing block. This is a stone with a divot in it. You need a spindle. You need a hearth board in which the spindle spins, an ember catch, and of course the bow with the cord. The bow is roughly uh, as long as your arm. Uh, the cord needs to be pretty strong because it's uh, gonna be rotating the spindle and under a fair amount of force. Often the hearth board is about the same diameter as your thumb. This one's a little thinner, but uh, I've, I've had good luck with it, so I'm, I've been getting away with it. Likewise, the spindle is about the diameter of your thumb. So those are both good measures. The bow uh, should have a slight curve in it. I prefer it with a slight curve in it. It needs to be strong. So you should do the knee test, you know, kind of give it a little pull or a medium pull and make sure that doesn't snap. Um, other things can be used for the bearing block, including a piece of wood, hardwood, with a divot carved into it. So that's another acceptable option. Or a lot of man-made materials, a bottle, uh, shot glass, um, piece of pottery, anything that's smooth and it has a little divot in it. I would prep the, the spindle in two, on the two ends. The bottom end will have a fairly stubby point which I'm carving right now. This short point allows me to do a fairly small divot to start with. If you put your spindle down, it needs to be in just a, like another third or so, uh, roughly where the, the opposite end, the opposite edge of the spindle is, is, is about the right place. So I'll do it right here. Rotate my knife some. Feels like that that's fairly secure. This, the divot will get deeper as I do the burn-in. To do the burn-in, we need to load the spindle into the bow. I hold it like so, put the pointed end to the right, rotate it away from me, and then back up. And then I can hold all of that with one hand so that then I have this hand to uh, manipulate the other objects. So it's good form to uh, not step on your hearth board with a nasty wet boot. So I've taken mine off. The stubby end of the, of the spindle goes into that divot I made in the hearth board. And then I hold the bearing block in my hand. I hug my knee and brace the inside of my wrist against my shin so that I create this stable structure. I'm gonna be doing a lot of vigorous motion over here. And the more stable this is, the better. If I'm trying to hold this out here, it's gonna be a mess and it's gonna be very difficult. It doesn't really do you a whole lot of good to go like crazy right now. You see, I've already got some smoke and I'm, I'm still talking comfortably. I'm not working that hard. Uh, as long as it takes for the entire bottom of the spindle to become burned. I'm probably there right now. Let's take a look. So you can see the entire bottom of the spindle has been burned. And this divot is now deeper. This tells me I'm at a good point to carve a notch. We can also start to evaluate the punk, the dust that comes off. We see that it's nice, dark, dark brown, almost black. Stop, cut, stop, cut, stop, cut. Carve in, carve in. I need to go a little bit further. It's not exactly on the center, but it doesn't matter as long as it's deep enough. The purpose of the notch is to allow the hot dust that's being formed in here to fall down and collect in that notch. It will slowly build up. And when it gets to the height where that dust is where the spindle meets the heartboard, that's the hottest point. And at that point, I'll put on a little extra speed and pressure in an effort to ignite the hot dust into a glowing ember. My notch is a little too good here. It's sort of holding the string on its own. There we go. And then at this end, I do typically tie a clove hitch. And the reason is that often this needs to be tightened up. And a clove hitch, you can sort of torque on this short end and it will tighten this up. So you can just sort of crank on it and it tightens up that string a little bit. 
So you don't have to tie and untie this quite so often as, as some other knots. I'm gonna start off with uh, smooth, even strokes, not going very fast. It doesn't help you to go fast initially because we need to build that dust pile up before we try to get ignition. We we'll try and keep the bow flat, parallel with the ground. More just getting a feel for how the machine works than anything else. Giving it time, and making sure to breathe. If you get into a mindset that you need to be here doing this for three minutes or something, and you don't gas yourself out, and you'll find that things actually come about a lot faster. So I'm starting to get some smoke, which means I'm starting to accumulate some dust in the notch. And now that the punk, the dust is up to the level of the bottom of the spindle, I'm gonna go harder and faster for a little bit. And we can check. This is a time when you don't wanna freak out. This is still just a loose pile of dust that could still fall apart. So we need to be patient, give it a second, and that will consolidate into more of a solid mass. We can tap on the hearth board, carefully pull it away. I'm just gonna bring some of this together a little bit. So we have more like one coal than two, two. But at this point, this is a pretty solid mass. So we have two choices. We can pick this up and dump it into the tinder bundle, or we can put the tinder bundle over it and then flip the whole thing as a unit. I'd say the latter course is a little bit safer. So I'm gonna put this over the smoldering coal, get my fingers under the ember catch, tap, 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 and I've deposited the ember into the center of the bird's nest. If I can find the prevailing wind, I'm gonna put my back to it. It'll help me do some of the work. You start off blowing very gently. As the smoke becomes thicker and more dense, you can give it more air. You always wanna make sure that there's fuel touching the ember. At the same time, you don't wanna crush it or smother it. There you go, blow drill friction pad. 